So this is the masthead of William Lloyd Garrison's original abolitionist newspaper, but it's colorized because it's the Liberator Dot today. I'm being hard on our greatest and best leaders, because while they are trying their utmost to give us hope in the face of encroaching devastation, they aren't providing the radical hope that a realistic view of that devastation will require. Last week I was hard on Dr. Jane Goodall, that intelligent and thoughtful and gentle and Christian friend of the chimpanzees. This week I'll be kinder to her, primarily because the world's greatest living conservationist was willing to go to a place she had feared since childhood. I'm not talking about Tanzania. My name is Lowell Bliss, and this is episode 29 of the Liberator Today's video series on hope. The, uh, the book that Jane Goodall wrote in 1999 is called A Reason for Hope, A Spiritual Journey. It is her autobiography. And she had seen some hopeless situations, such as genocide in Burundi and her second husband's death by cancer. Beginning in chapter 15, the narrative is over, and it's the time to turn philosophical and sum things up. She writes, quote, The question I am asked most often as I travel around the world springs from people's deepest fear. Jane, do you think there is hope? She identifies four very worthy reasons for hope. The ingenuity of the human brain to solve problems, the resilience of nature to bounce back from devastation, the energy and enthusiasm that is found or can be kindled among young people worldwide, and number four, what she calls the indomitable human spirit. More recently, and in response to what she has seen with global climate change since 1999, she has added a fifth reason for hope, social media's ability to organize people globally. But then she starts chapter 16, her penultimate chapter, and she starts it in a rather strange fashion. She says, now I have one last journey to share, a mind journey from evil to love, she writes. There seems to be something incomplete in her book, or maybe in her life. When we consider how the ch subject of chapter 16, the Jewish Holocaust in Europe, has troubled her all her life. In chapter 16, she will land on radical hope, hope adequate for something as devastating as the Holocaust. Writing earlier about her childhood, Goodall writes, quote, when the war finally ended in Europe on May 7th, 1945, the grim rumors about the Nazi death camps were confirmed. The first photographs appeared in the newspapers. I was 11 years old, she writes, 11 years old at the time, very impressionable and imaginative. Although the family would like to have spared the me the most horrifying Holocaust pictures. I have never been prevented from reading the newspapers, and they did not stop me then. Those photographs had a profound impact on my life. I could not erase the images of walking skeletons with their deep sunk eyes. And then she writes, thus the Holocaust dramatically introduced me to the age old problem of good and evil. This was not an abstract theological problem in 1945. It was a very real question that we had to face as the horror stories mounted. I found that things were not as clear-cut as they once had seemed, that life was full of ambiguity and contradictions. The Holocaust unsettled me deeply. All my life I have felt compelled to buy books about the Nazis and the death camps. How could people behave that way? How could anyone endure and survive such torture? It seems I've been asking these questions my entire life." Unquote. Chapter 16 is entitled Beyond the Holocaust, and she narrates her visits to Auschwitz and Birkenau. She rehearses the stories and the images from her childhood. They are just as bad as the memories as they, they're just as bad as memories as they were as news releases. It really was that bad, that horrific the stuff of nightmares. For myself, I've always wondered at what point did Germans like Dietrich Bonhoeffer wake up to the Nazi takeover and think, nothing is going to stop this and it's going to be bad. At what point did Europeans like Jane Goodall's parents wake up to the coming Blitzkrieg and think, nothing is going to stop this 
and it is going to be bad. What point did European Jews wake up to the coming Holocaust and think, nothing is going to stop this, it's going to be bad. Winston Churchill said in 1936, quote, the era of procrastination of half measures of soothing and baffling expedience of delays is coming to its close. In its place, we are entering a period of consequences. After Dunkirk, he likely knew how awful those consequences would be. Al Gore included Churchill's quotation in his presentation in Inconvenient Truth. The era of procrastination is coming to its close, and now nothing is going to stop the suffering attendant to climate change, and it's going to be bad. For 50 years, I have lived with the horror of the Holocaust, Goodall writes. The images of torture and death imprinted on my child's mind, never very far beneath the surface. The visit to Auschwitz and Birkenau helped to release some of the pain from my heart. But by her own omission, something, quote, helped even more. She met an Auschwitz and Birkenau survivor named Henry Landworth. Henry was 13 years old when he was sent off to five years of shuttling between labor camps and concentration camps. Goodell tells the story. Henry's final escape was miraculous. He and two other Jewish prisoners were marched up to be executed. But the war was nearly over and the soldiers didn't want to kill them. They lined them up to be shot, as Henry's father had been shot, but then told them to run. They ran. And so Henry, desperately sick as he was, with his head smashed in by a ruffle, rifle butt, his, his legs gangrenous from untreated sores, found his freedom. In Landreth's own autobiography, entitled Gift of Life, he confesses to being, quote, blinded by hatred, by a child's need to hurt as others, hurt others as I have been hurt. However, when Jane Goodall met Henry Landreth, Landworth, 30 years after the death camps. Landworth was the founding director of Give Kids the World, a charity which enables children with terminal or life-threatening diseases to enjoy Disney World together with their families. Quote, this is good all now. I have watched Henry with the children, seen the light in his eyes and theirs, and the ultimate magic, give the kids the world can lead to miracles. There are many parents who write to say that the pure joy and exhilaration of the experience gave their child a new lease on life. Some of them even recover completely. Nonetheless, Goodall doesn't add a, a photo with Mickey Mouse or, or a nice uh, experience surrounded by caring volunteers as a sixth reason for hope in the world. Instead, instead she lets Holocaust survivor Henry Landworth speak. Quote, where does a truly, where does a heart truly broken, a spirit hopelessly abandoned, find hope? Landworth asks. What exists within a human being that allows for survival amidst such devastation? It must be God. Who else could it be? Landworth says. You know, there's an old anecdote about the Sunday school teacher who asked her class, now February 2nd is coming up and it's a holiday on that day. What comes out of its hole and looks for its shadow to predict if we have six more weeks of winter? One little boy timidly raises his hand. Teacher, I know that the answer is supposed to be Jesus, but it sure sounds like the groundhog to me. There are plenty of problems in the world where groundhogs or a Sunday school answer is sufficient, but only God is adequate for something like the Holocaust or, or for species ex extinction or for what's in store for us with climate change. I know one spiritual counselor who claims that his role is to help a client reshape his or her problem until the only answer that is left is Jesus. Goodall concludes, although I can never accept evil, deliberate, malicious cruelty to man or beast, and though I shall always fight it, I do not have to account for its presence among us. For now, and here, and she quotes scripture, we can only see as through a glass darkly. 
And now I think I understand Jane Goodall's previously unsatisfying reasons for hope. I don't think she is saying that the sixth extinction or that the worst effects of climate change will be prevented any more than her beloved husband was delivered by cancer. But she is saying that with God, she has hope that she will keep on fighting to the end. And she believes that with God, we have the hope of grace so that we can pass through it and out to the other side. And yes, the Creator God will use the remarkable human brain, the resiliency of nature, the rigor of youth, youth the resolute human spirit, and the relational power of organizing as part of what God uses to carry us through and across. Jane Goodall's favorite Bible verse, bar none, given to her by her beloved grandmother, is Deuteronomy 33.25, King James Version. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. That's a promise from God. I am Lowell Bliss, Christian environmental missionary and climate activist. Thank you for visiting the Liberator today.